sometimes you don't want just to decouple the domain from the UI. You also want to decouple the UI from the domain. For example, you may have multiple applications. You've probably seen this. Imagine like these large companies, large tech companies. They have hundreds of applications. Some applications yeah. they, they use internally, some internally, applications they yeah. use externally. And they have, usually they want to keep the same UI, the same feel, the same branding. Mm -hmm. Then you may be able to reuse the user interface with a different domain. If you want to decouple them and use them in isolation, you can use the UI in a, an application A and with a different domain, with domain B. To do this, you cannot depend on a concrete domain directly. Exactly. So when we have two modules here, imagine you have a UI package and you have a domain package. They are separate modules. And you don't want them to depend on each other because you want to use them independently. When you need to use things independently, you need to decouple them. Otherwise, yes. you cannot even compile the code if you don't bring the other module. So how do we decouple two modules if they need to communicate, but we don't want them to depend on each other? Let's see. That's another one of the favorites. What do you guys think in the chat? See, everyone's saying that there can be breaking changes on model. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't want to yes. depend directly on the domain. If the model changes, you don't want to break the UI and so on. Also, leak implementation details. That's it. The API can change names. Yes. You also want to decouple the API details from the domain and single responsibility principle. Fantastic. Dependency injection possibly with composition root. Okay. We need an adapter layer. So if you want to decouple the UI from the domain, in this scenario, we shouldn't talk directly to the domain or any type that depends on the domain. Here, the service depends on the domain. So the UI should not depend on the domain or any module that depends on the domain. So it shouldn't depend on the service or on the domain layers, packages or frameworks, whatever we're using, pod. Exactly. So we need an adapter layer. Yeah. And just to clarify, depending on the domain in, for these cases will be like, if you were uh, declaring the view model, right, you would have to import the domain module. You would say import domain, import service, you know? So that's exactly what we, are, what we want to avoid here. Right? Yeah, and if you create a package for the UI, you would even have to add the domain as a dependency of that package as yes. well. Yes, yes, yes. Right, and then inside the code, you need to also import the framework in your mm -hmm. file to have access to the expense. And we don't want that in this scenario. Yeah. So in this scenario, we need an adapter, an adapter layer. So instead of the view controller talking directly to the service that depends on the domain, we need to decouple the view controller from that. And how we do it, we can create a protocol inside the UI layer that will provide us an interface to send events from the user interface mm -hmm. that an adapter will observe, will receive the events here, and will pass the messages to the service. Or even it can talk directly to the protocol. But yeah, to the abstraction. Like this. Exactly. But if there was no protocol, it will talk to the API service, yes. All right, and as someone said here, you can use dependency injection with a composition root, dependency mm -hmm. inversion, that's it. So you can keep this adapter layer in the composition root or in its a standalone module. And this is a very concrete, this adapter layer is very concrete. You don't reuse it. So usually it stays in the application target, in the application module, but it can also be moved to an independent standalone module as long as the UI doesn't depend on it because the UI should not depend on anything that depends on the domain and service. That's it. This abstraction here could be a closure, could be a, an abstract class, could be a protocol, could be even a delegate, mm -hmm. delegate protocol. So the view controller can send events like I want to request new expenses or an expense has been selected, something like that. Makes sense so far? This way, this protocol lives inside the UI module. Look at that. You don't want to depend on other types. This way, you can eliminate this dependency here. Boom. All the communication will go through this interface here. Yeah. That can be a delegate, a closure, any kind of callback that you can send through an abstract interface, a polymorphic interface that an adapter will implement and reach the communication. This way, the service doesn't depend on the UI and the UI doesn't depend on the service. When you want 
this separation, you can use an adapter, which is very concrete and usually stays in the composition, in the application module. All right. That's it. Now, what about the domain here? We need to eliminate these two errors as well to achieve our goal. How can we do it? We also need an adapter here to bridge. So the expense list view model, list item view model, mm -hmm. it needs an expense to be able to populate its data. So it needs the name of the expense. It may need the, the decimal value, the amount, right. the currency code to be able to format the data. And the same here, the detail may need all those details as well. That's why they depend on the expense because they need this data to populate the UI. Another thing we can do is to create an adapter layer to make this conversion from domain model into view models. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're following MVP, you could do this with a presenter, for example, in another module. But if you keep want to keep this presentation module like we do here, agnostic from the domain, we can actually create an adapter as well. That can be simply an extension of right. the view model right. that performs the mapping logic and extension. Like this. And this will live in another module as well, in the adapter layer, probably right. in the application module. So again, when we are defining the expense list item view model, we don't have any references to the expense anymore, right? That's it. That's the constraint we use here to eliminate this dependency. That we do not import anything. We do not reference the expense type. So look how we had an arrow from the AUI component to the domain, and it's gone now. Mm -hmm. And it can either be a new component or just an extension, as, as long as you define this extension in a separate module. Yeah. Swift but we still have that. one arrow here. What should we do? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Create a tiny extension in another module, the adapter layer to bridge this communication. Yeah. So once again, you see that there are no purple arrows pointing from the UI right towards the R the orange ones. So the other the way domain doesn't point to anyone, to any component. So it doesn't depend on any other component or module. Mm -hmm. Now the service depends on the domain. You can see an arrow going through the service component into the domain. Mm -hmm. And the UI was depending on the domain. It was, but now it wasn't, it's not. Now it is not because we moved that into the adapter layer here, just a thin layer to bridge this communication between the UI and the domain. And you do it when you want to decouple the UI from the domain and the domain from the UI. This usually happens in large teams, in large applications, large companies that need to reuse the UI in isolation, the domain in isolation. And this way we separate these two modules. The UI doesn't depend on the domain anymore.